Hello people, how are you doing? Welcome to the new video of the React series. Today we are going to discuss about a very fundamental concept called Virtual DOM. With Virtual DOM, we are also going to learn what reconciliation is. We will be learning the diffing algorithms and lot of other stuff that you know usually people ask in the interviews. So DOM, Virtual DOM, reconciliation, diffing algorithms, multiple diffing algorithms, batch update. Let's get accustomed with all these terms in this video. You are with that, so let's get started. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I keep sharing a lot of good stuff in this channel. Thank you very much. Before we care for virtual DOM, let us know what is DOM. So DOM is an abbreviation or kind of shortcut for the word document object model. That's great, but what it is? Now, if you see, HTML is the language, is the markup language for the web. So it means that it gives a structure to your web page or the web application that you see on the browser. You define different tags and different tags has got different meaning. And with the tags, you define the entire structure of the web page. But under the hood, these the tags has a different kind of meaning or different kind of representation. Why this different kind of meaning or representation is required? Because this HTML, whatever you see that renders on the web page is pretty much static. So, for example, the P tag that we see over here, it says DOM is document object model until unless you have an ability to change this particular text, this web page is going to look like this only or you have the ability to change this H1, the web page is going to look like this only. There won't be any further changes. So, it means you should have an ability to change thing in the structure, some values in this HTML so that your HTML page looks dynamic. Now, how do you change it? HTML doesn't have a direct ability to do that. That's why JavaScript come into picture and with JavaScript there is an API called document object model API through which you should be able to change a lot of stuff in your HTML structure. Okay, so DOM, the document object model is an API, the DOM API is an API that is provided by JavaScript to do some query on your HTML structure, document structure and do certain manipulation like setting new values and things like that. That's great. Now we are talking about structure. What exactly the structure? Now this entire representation you can change and represent in a tree, tree kind of structure. So if you see here it is almost similar but it's a tree kind of structure. You have a doc type with an attribute called HTML then you have a HTML as a root node then you have head as a child node, then you have title, title has a text called what's DOM, then you have a body at the same level of head, it has an H1 with a text, P with a text. So it's a tree, tree representation of the same structure that we have seen in the HTML, the code that we are writing as a markup language. This tree structure is what will be used as an input when JavaScript DOM API is coming to picture to change something. So it means JavaScript DOM API is going to traverse through this particular tree, this particular DOM tree, okay, document object model tree to retrieve any of the pieces of information and change that. So for example, if I want to retrieve this H1, there will be some API to retrieve this H1 and then set a text, change a text for this H1 using the DOM object model API. And this particular document tree is also loosely called a DOM tree. So this is what the DOM is. But finally, when these things get rendered on the browser, we get to see things like this. So we have a HTML structure, then we have a DOM tree, a document tree, and then finally there is a rendered view. This is something that we need to keep in mind before we understand virtual DOM very clearly. Okay, so this is good. We have an understanding of DOM now. So the next thing that we, what we want to kind of get there is uh, something called DOM manipulation. I'm sure that you would have heard this term DOM manipulation. So let's understand what exactly DOM manipulation is. So a DOM manipulation basically uh, comprises of three things. Though we are showing two here, but it comprises of three things. One is querying the DOM. It means that you want to find an element in the document tree or the DOM tree. So you will be querying the DOM. Second thing is updating the DOM. That is what we are saying here, DOM, DOM update. And Last thing is the rendering. After your update happens, it has to render on the browser or re-render on the browser, right? So one part is DOM querying, another part is DOM manipulation. In DOM manipulation, you have two parts. One is like DOM update, another is re-rendering. Now, usually, 
the querying and just updating part is a bit uh, lighter operation okay but when you have to re-render or render the part on the browser uh, a post update that is a bit costly so that's a bit costly operation so it means that if you want to update your dom frequently very frequently you might end up reducing the performance of your app and your app might eventually become slower so you don't want to do that right and that is where some of the libraries or the frameworks uh, like come into picture to solve that problem react is definitely on top of them because it's declarative nature you don't have to update the dom at any point of time you tell react what to do react does it for you so you don't play with the dom uh, you know never directly until unless there are very specific use cases probably using use ref that we have learned earlier in this particular video series so we are good so far so react takes care of some of these things but how that's why we will be learning virtual dom concept very deeply however before that let's take one more example let's take this table so here is a table where we are showing a list of users and whether those, those, those particular users are married or not so Alan is married, Clark is not married, Ethan is married like that. Now assume if you have to change Daniel's marital status from no to yes, how would you write this? You will be writing certain kind of uh, DOM API through that you will be picking the Daniel uh, element like you know uh, each of the each of the node in the DOM tree represent one element. So you'll be picking that and then you'll be changing this value. But for this one unfortunately you have to traverse through the entire you know dom structure that represents this particular table or or the html where this table is part of and then you have to figure out and point out where daniel is and then you have to do the changes right so this traversing this traversing thing is you know uh, costly if it is too much nested and updating is more costly and then rendering is more costly that's what we heard so to solve this purpose what react does is basically react never ever update the original dom tree it never never update the original dom tree the original directly okay never ever update the original dom tree directly this is one point that you need to remember react creates for every dom tree representation one you know object that looks exactly same as the dom tree the same tree structure and that particular object or that particular copy of your original dom is called virtual dom okay so a virtual dom is nothing but an in memory copy of your original dom that react updates directly than updating the original dom directly why because the virtual dom is in memory any kind of in memory operations are faster all right virtual dom is an exact copy of your original dom so it means that the update that you will be making into the virtual DOM, not, not only that, that it will be faster, but also it is easier to sync at a, at a later point of time. We'll see that how to sync that as a later point of time to the original DOM. Okay. So what is virtual DOM? Virtual DOM is a copy of your original DOM and it's an in-memory object that React keeps. React updates that. It never updates the original DOM directly. At some later point of time, based on certain algorithm, it will be updating the original DOM partially based on whatever is changing in the virtual DOM. So that's the main logic that we are going to talk over here. Now, how this entire thing happened? So in the next, you know, couple of videos, I want you to pay special attention so that you understand how this entire flow happened. Okay, so let's see that. So here we have something called original DOM. It means it's a DOM structure that we are seeing over here and what we'll be doing is like we'll see like how this updates happen. So first thing is like whenever React is getting started with any kind of operation, a component gets mounted and its operation gets started for that particular component has a JSX structure. For this JSX structure, there is a DOM structure already created because JSX is nothing but a HTML like structure. If for this, there is a DOM structure has got created. So that's the original DOM. So React starts with like for this original DOM is going to first create a copy in memory copy and creates a virtual DOM. Great. The virtual DOM has got created. Now in this virtual DOM, each of this node that you are seeing here represent one of the element, right? So each of this, each of this node, so something is div inside that P, something like that. Okay. Now let's assume there is a change happen. For example, let's assume this particular element state got changed. Okay. Please pay special attention. This particular element state got changed. If this element state got changed, what this is going to do, what React is going to do 
React is still not going to update this virtual DOM directly. What it is going to do, it is going to create a new copy of the virtual DOM. Okay, new copy of the virtual DOM with the changes that happen. So if this particular element got changed, this particular node gets changed, React will mark that from this one, its substree has got a change. From this one, its substree got a change. So in the substree, it will mark as a change tree. Okay, it is still not updating the virtual DOM directly, the one, the copy that it had created. Now the next step what React will do, React will do a diff between this the previous copy of the virtual DOM and the current copy of the virtual DOM. Once the diff happen, the intention of the diff is to identify what has been exactly changed. So it has identified, okay, this is the portion, this subtree portion is exactly got changed. So the next thing that it has to do is like it has to do make some updates to the original DOM based on the changes that has happened over here. So what it will do, it will figure out, okay, this portion of the original DOM, that is what I need to change and let me update the actual DOM or the original DOM right away so that the change gets reflected. Okay, so this is what, this is how the entire things work. Now you might have a question, hey, is it going to update right after the second stage to the original DOM? No, it's not like that. So there is something called batch update. There is an algorithm for updating as well uh, from the virtual DOM to the original DOM and React will take a call like when is the right time to do this update. So there might be another uh, state change happen somewhere over here and for that there will be another copy of this virtual DOM will be created and it will mark that particular instance and again then there will be a diff and it will accumulate all this diff together and then it will do a batch update to the original DOM. Just for the demonstration purpose over here I have shown only one stage there could be multiple stage where the changes happen all the changes will be accumulated together and then at a particular time as a right time based on the reacts algorithm it is going to update the original down with a batch update so this is the process this is how the virtual DOM works now advantage the advantage that what you see I didn't have to traverse through the entire stuff right very well I know with this div that what exactly got updated and I am doing a batch update so it means that I am not updating the original DOM very frequently. I am up updating the original DOM only at a particular frequency and that is why our rendering update manipulation is not going to make the performance down. That is why React is declarative. That is why React is going to take care of all these DOM updates for you. And you shouldn't do that by yourself as much as possible because you might bring certain kind of performance problem. Let React handle this one. This is what the importance of virtual DOM. Now, while we are talking about virtual DOM, we are understanding virtual DOM. I think one another uh, term that you guys have heard that's called reconciliation. So what exactly reconciliation is? I am sure that you'll be understanding reconciliation much faster now. So React keeps the in-memory virtual representation of the actual DOM and keep it in sync with the batch update with the original DOM. We have, we have learned that, we have heard that this entire process is called reconciliation. So what you have learned so far, what you heard so far is exactly the process called reconciliation. So if someone asks you in interview, you know what exactly reconciliation, please start with uh, explaining what virtual DOM is and see how the virtual DOM gets into sync and this entire process is called reconciliation. Great. Now, a slide back, we have seen that between two copies of virtual DOM, we are doing certain kind of diff. So React performs a diffing algorithm. So the diffing algorithm actually makes sure that how to calculate the diff and what portion of the DOM tree has got changed so that it can make this update. So I will take you through some two or three examples of uh, diffing algorithm, like how diffing algorithm works. That will help you to understand is like, okay, when you are coding, when you're changing something, you know, in, in React, in the JSX part, like what kind of diffing might happen, right? So that will kind of make you more empowered in terms of thinking. So let's take this particular use case. I have a div inside that I have a p tag and it has a text. Okay. Let's say this particular thing got changed from div to section. So what happened exactly here? The child element p is intact, but that root element div has got changed to section. So in this kind of change, in this kind of DOM change, it is the root which is getting changed. So in this case, the, what the algorithm, different algorithm will do, it will tear down this entire tree means destroying this entire tree, rebuild this one because the root itself has got changed. So that's the algorithm, rebuild this one. And then this is what it, it will be finding as a diff. So in, diff is that entire part and this entire part will be updated to the original DOM as part of the batch update. So first rule, if the root itself was changed, so this means it will tearing down the previous DOM tree, previous version of the virtual DOM 
and the latest version of the virtual rom that particular section itself is gets updated so if this happens only if the root gets changed now the next example is there is a p tag and there is an attribute called class name which is valid greeting and then there is a text and what changes here here changes only in that class name from the greeting it become my greeting so in this case the root element is not changing only the attribute is changing so in this particular case there is no tear down happen only the attribute section has got changed and only that particular portion will be reflected or changed as part of batch update to the original rom great so these two cases we understood now the third case which we have used in multiple example in this particular series uh, when we actually iterate through an array using map and list the value right let's see that example so this is the example please pay some attention over here so what we have we have a ulli tag and here so there's certain kind of fruits there's a red apple there is a strawberry there is a kiwi fruit and there is a pineapple and let's say there is a change like this the change is like this you know apple portion there is some other fruit came here lemon came this kiwi and this one is in the same you know there is no change in that so when there is a list right and there is a list has to compare what uh, react does is like it will take both of this in memory and do a line by line comparison now if it has to do line by line comparison like you know from this to this comparison it will has to again traverse through the entire entire stuff so for example it is going to see okay apple apple is not here is there apple anywhere no apple is not there anywhere okay then discard apple and then add this one then here when it comes here, okay this is kiwi do i find kiwi anywhere okay kiwi is here okay fine let's keep kiwi let's keep pineapple that way so this kind of comparison is little bit heavier and the more li elements you have it is going to hit your performance more that's when we use a special attribute called key when we are actually listing things in react application if we don't specify the key it is going to shout with a warning saying that the key is missing and if you have ever seen that particular warning this is the reason because if we had a key like this so with this key it is much easier to identify where the particular element with key has changed got added got removed or whatever it is and with that making this comparison is much much easier so that's the that's the another diffing algorithm that react uses and that is the reason we ask you the react ask you to add a key whenever you are doing a listing element because making that diff is much much faster than uh, you know uh, in this case so these are the three diff algorithm so at this stage i hope it is very clear to you now you completely understand what is dom what is virtual dom what is exactly your reconciliation what is diffing what kind of diffing algorithm happens now be it any question that comes to you in the interview you will be able to give answer to this so was it useful to you please let me know in the comment section of this video let me also know what is your understanding of virtual dom reconciliation and the diffing algorithm after going through this video i am sure you understood this concept completely Okay, if you have any question, don't forget to ping me on Twitter. This is my Twitter handle. And also you can post your comment into the comment section of this video. I'll get back with the answers. Until next time, take a good care of yourself and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. See you then.